guys welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time of watching my video this is regular school of fashion in one of my old videos i showed you guys how to make an abetiaja cap meaning a dog head cap after the release of that video i got a lot of reactions requesting for the kid version of the tutorial so guys in today's video I will be showing you a new design of Abitaja cap for kids using step-by-step -step method. My name is Balaji and this is Reggie School of Fashion. These are the two fabrics I will be using in constructing my Abitiaja cap for kids. I have my African print here, which is known as, as Ankara in the western part of Nigeria. And also, I will be making use of a fusible interfacing. So this fusible interfacing is a cutting one and it is a very high quality fusible interfacing. Okay, so you can use any fabric of your choice that is 100% cotton. So if you don't want to use fabric like this, you can also make use of Ashoke. Ashoke is also an African print which is popular in the western part of Nigeria. So now I have my two materials available here. So I will start with the measurements needed in making a Abetiaja cap for kids. So this measurement will work perfectly for a child with head circumference of 20 inches. If the head circumference of the child is lower than 20 inches, so which means you will have to reduce all these measurements by half of an inch. If the head circumference of the child is more than 20 inches, then you will have to add half of an inch to all these measurements I will be showing you right now. Now, this point to this point is the width of my fabric. And from this point downward is the length of my fabric. As you can see, my fabric is on fold. This is the right side of my fabric and this is the wrong side. So I folded my fabric right side facing the right side. So now at the upper part of my fabric, I will draw a border line. So the border line is going to be my starting point. Okay, so for the width measurement, I will be using 5.5 inches and I'll be taking the measurement from the folded side of my fabric. So here I have my 5.5 inches point. So that is for the width of the fabric. As I said earlier, this measurement is for head circumference 20 inches. The child's head circumference measurement is 20 inches. If you are making yours for a lower measurement, that is, the head circumference is not up to 20 inches, all you need to do is to reduce this measurement by half of an inch. And if the head circumference of the child is more than 20 inches, just add half of an inch to all the measurements I will be using in this tutorial. Then for the length of the Abetiaja cap, which is also known as a dog head cap, I will be marking 15 inches. Okay, then I will make a straight line. So there is no need of adding seam allowance to all these measurements. So the measurement has been calculated together with the seam allowances. So on this line, I will insert the 5.5 inches so that I can connect the two points together. Okay, now I have my measurement drawn out on my fabric. So the next step is to cut it out. Now,
Now, when you are constructing cap for kids, the age doesn't really matter. What matters most is the egg circumference measurement of the child. So now I have my first piece cut out. Then I will be using this as a pattern to cut out the second piece. So guys, now I have the two pieces cut out. Here is the first piece and this is the second piece. So the next step is to open up the two pieces like so. This is my right side and this is the wrong side. So I'll be marking the wrong side. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. Okay, so now you have to pay a closer attention at this point, okay? So this is the way I cut out my fabric. This is 5.5 inches by 15 inches on fold. So which means after I open this up, I will have 11 inches by 15 inches. So I have it folded like so. Now I will open it up, then fold it in an opposite direction. So which means the horizontal is coming to vertical and vertical to horizontal position. Now I have it like this. So this is the way I folded when I was cutting out. Now this is my new fold. So you can see the new fold. Once I have it like so, then I will take it to my ironing board and I will give it a good press. So I will be repeating the same process on the second piece as well. Can you see what I have? So I will give it a good press and I will be back to show you the next step. So guys, now I have my two pieces well ironed as you can see. So here is the wrong side. This is the wrong side. The inside is the right side like this so the next step is to stitch the upper part of the two pieces okay so you can choose any side to be the upper part it can be this side or this side so there's no rule that guide this now i'll be making use of this part as the upper part of my fabric so i'll be stitching with half of an inch or 0 0.375 from hedge to hedge from here to here from here so here so can stitch with half of an inch or 0 0.375 i will be stitching this and i'll be back to show you the next step so guys now i have the upper part of the two pieces stitched as you can see so the next step is to place notches at this point. So that is the folded side of the fabric. So I'll just cut this a little bit closer to the same point, but I will not cut up to the same point. Okay. So now that I have this notch, then I will open up the seam allowance. Can you see what I'm doing? So I'll open it up and I will give it a press. So I'll open up the seam allowance like so. So I'll give it a press. After giving it a press, I will be back to show you the next step. Now I have the seam allowance opened up as you can see. So the next step is to turn this to the right side. So in turning this, I will trim off the seam allowance I have at the upper part. Like so, then I will turn this to the right side. Okay, so this is what I have after turning, turning to the right side. Can you see what I have? Then I will repeat the same process on the second piece. So 
So the next step is to take this to my ironing board and give it a good press. So guys, now I've given this a good press and this is what I have after giving it a press. You can see how flat and neat it looks. Also, when I was giving it a press, I make sure the seam line falls at the center of this line. What do I mean by this? I took the measurements I have on the shorter part of my pieces. You can see after folding, I have this part shorter than this. So on this shorter part, I took the measurements I have over there, which is 15 inches. And I make sure the seam line falls at the midpoint, which is seven and a half inches. Half of 15 inches is seven and a half inches. So the seam line falls on the seven and a half inches point. So make sure you do this when you are making yours. So the next step is to shape the two pieces. In shaping the two pieces, I will fold one into half like so, making sure the two edges align properly. So you can see after folding, I can see the shorter parts of my cap. You can see what I have. So not like this. I did not fold like this. I folded in such a way I will be seeing the shorter parts of my cap. Okay, so this is what I have after folding my cap in half. Then I will come to the shorter part of my cap, which is this piece. Then I will take the measurement I have over there. Because this cap is for a kid, what I will be measuring is 5 inches. So I will take this to the point I have 5 inches measurement. You can see what I'm doing. I started from the opening, which is the shorter part of the cap. When I took the measurement, what I have is 7.5 inches. So I will be adjusting this upward until I have 5 inches from edge to edge. Okay, so here I have 5 inches. You can see what I have from here to here, from this edge to this edge. I have my 5 inches on the other side. So now I will mark the open point. This is the folded side and this is the open point. You can see what I have. So from this point, I will be shaping my cap to the lower part of the longer part of the cap. This is the shorter part and this is the longer part. Can you see what I have? So I will shape this. So at this point, you can give your cap any shape of your choice. Okay, so you can make it go round like so you can make it stop somewhere around here you can decide to get the midpoint of what you have on the longer part of the cap so that is 7.5 you can get the midpoint and make your connection to stop at the midpoint but because i want to give you a new design of abitia jack cap i will be bringing this connection i'll be connecting this point closer to this edge So if you don't have a curve ruler, you can actually achieve this with your free hand. So what I have here is 1.75. So with my shaping here, I have 1.75, but I will adjust it to 2 inches. Two inches point as I said earlier you can decide to make use of the midpoint so here is the two inches point so the two inches point is what I'll be connecting to the five inches point okay so you can see what I have now
So this is the shaping for my Abitiaja cap. So if you want it more curvy, you can decide to bring it like this from here, from the five inches point. Then you curve it to meet the two inches. You can make use of 2.5 inches or the midpoint of the 7.5 inches point. But as for me, because I want a new design for the Abitiaja cap, I'll be making use of this shape. So now I can cut this out. I can either cut the two together at the same time or cut this out first, then use it as a template to cut the second piece. So now I have this and I will use it as a template to cut the second piece. So guys, now I have the two pieces shaped properly. You can see what I have after shaping the two pieces. So the next step is to join extra piece to the shorter part of the cap in order to match up with the longer part. So all I'll be doing is I will just cut out extra piece from my leftover fabric. Then I will attach it to this side. So guys, now I've cut out the two pieces. I will be joining together with this. So I have this. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. And I will position it right side facing the right side. Right side facing the right side. This as well right side facing the right side and I will stitch so I will hold it like so then I will stitch from hedge to hedge after stitching I will be back to show you the next step so guys now I've joined the pieces together with the cap okay so after joining I top stitch on the seam allowance you can see I flipped my seam allowance upward okay so after top stitching then I gave it a good press and this is what I have so the next step is to trim off the pieces I joined to align with the shape I have at the lower part of my cap. So now I have the two sides aligned properly. You can see what I have and I will trim the second piece as well. So after trimming the excess half, this is what I have for the two pieces. You can see what I have. So this is the joint side and this is what I have on the other side. So the next step is to fuse the two pieces. So I'll be fusing this and I'll be fusing this. So this will help the fabric to stay well. Okay. If you are making use of Asho K, you might not need to fuse your fabric. So now I'm cutting out the fusible interfacing using the shape I have on my cap. You can see I pin my cap together with the fusible interfacing. And I'm cutting the two pieces together at the same time. So now I have this cut out, as you can see, then I'll be fusing the wrong side of the cap. So in fusing my fabric, I'll be turning this to the wrong side. So this is the right side, I'll turn it to the wrong side, like so. Then I will place my fusible interfacing on the side I have joining. You can see the joining I have here. On this side, there's no joining. So I'll be fusing the parts that I have joining. Okay, then I will place my fusible interfacing like so, and I will give it a press. 
I will do this and I will repeat the same process on the second piece. I will be turning it to the wrong side. So after turning, then I will place my fusible interfacing. So the shiny side is the glowing side. So this shiny side is what we face the wrong side of the fabric like so. Then I will give it a press. You can see what I have. So this is what I'll be doing. So I'll be doing this and I'll be back to show you the next step. So guys, now I have the two pieces fused on the wrong side. Then I will be turning this to the right side. So after turning it to the right side, and I will give it a good press. So when you are making an abetiaja cap, you must very close, you must very close to your high board. Pressing at each stage is very important. So you can see what I have now. So I will take this to my ironi board and I will give it a very good press. So guys, now I've given this a good press and this is what I have after turning it to the right side and giving it a very good press. So the next step is to join the two pieces together. Now let me quickly explain this. When you are shaping your cap, don't forget when I was shaping the cap, I folded it into half like so and I measured 5 inches. So this is very important so that you don't make a mistake or have a shortage after constructing your cap. So I placed this on the edge and I placed it on the point I have my 5 inches point. Okay, the air circumference measurement I'm working with is 20 inches. Don't forget I have this on fold now. So this is going to give me 10 inches as a whole. And the second piece also will give me 10 inches as a whole. That was why I measured 5 inches on fold. 5 inches on fold multiplied by 2, that is 10. Then 10 plus 10, that is 20. So after taking these 5 inches, don't forget to bring down your measuring tape by half of an inch. So that by the time you are joining the two pieces together, you will not have a shortage. So instead of measuring 5 inches, okay, so you will measure 5.5 inches based on the air circumference measurement you are working with. If the air circumference measurement of the child is 18, that is 18 inches divided by 4. So whatever you have, you will add half of an inch or 1 inch to be on the silver side to that value. So that is what you'll be inserting on this area. So now I will be joining the two pieces together. I will open this hop like so and I will open this hop like so as well. The few side have to match each other like this. The few side to few side and the fabric to fabric side. So firstly, I will hold the two points to match each other properly and I will secure this with my sewing pin. So on the other side as well. So that point must meet each other properly. Okay, so after which I will continue pinning the two together. So I'll be pinning the remaining parts together. So the edges to us to align properly. Okay, so now I have the fused parts pinned together and I will pin the other side together as well. So when I'm stitching around the fabric side, I will not be closing all the edges permanently. I will leave about 2 to 2.5 inches, which I will be using in turning the cap inside out. So I will be stitching all around with quarter of an inch. But before stitching, it is necessary you insert the air circumference measurements you are working with on this area. Okay. So in order to have your cap laying flat like so, what you need to do is to make sure 
this triangular shape you have inside is laying flat on the fabric so make sure it's not squeezed so that you'll be able to see the shape you have out there so just lay it flat properly the two pieces like so so this is going to be under why this will cover up on the fabric side so with this you'll be able to take your measurements accurately So now for the head circumference measurement, what you need to do is measure what you have from hedge to hedge. Don't forget, I told you, you must have extra inches, like two to three inches apart from your head circumference measurement. So by the time you will take the measurements here, you will have extra one inch on this side and extra one inch on this side. So after stitching the cap all around, then you can trim off the hesses you have. So I will get the midpoint of the measurement I have here. I will mark out the midpoint. This is very important. Make sure you do not skip this step so that you don't have any issue after constructing your cap. So now I will be taking quarter of an inch away from here. I will mark the points. Then on this side as well, I will be marking quarter of an inch. So quarter of an inch here, quarter of an inch on the other side. Okay, so I will maintain the same value all around the cap. So I will be leaving about 2 to 2.5 inches open. When I'm stitching, I will not stitch all around the fabric side. So this is what I'll be using in turning the cap inside out. So guys, now I have the two pieces of the cap stitched together all around with quarter of an inch. As you can see, you can see what I have. So if you have enough seam allowances by the side of your cap, so make sure you trim it off. And if the shape you have on your cap is a kind of a round shape, so make sure you place notches all around the seam allowance so that it will be easier to turn inside out. And also in order to help the shape to come out properly so for the shape i have on my cap the important places i need to place notches are the the midpoint i have on the four side this side this side and two sides on the fabric side so that is the most important part i need to place my notches but if the shape of your cap is a kind of round shape so make sure you place your notches all around as you see me doing in this tutorial so guys, here is the opening I left on the fabric side. So this is what I'll be using in turning the cap inside out. So guys, now I have the cap turned inside out. So what I'll be doing now is to close the opening I have inside which i used in turning it inside out you can see what i have here so i'll pick this then i will close it before giving it a final press so i will i will push in the same allowance like so and i will hold the two edges together then give it a top stitch so guys this is what i have after giving my cap a final press you can see how neat and beautiful it looks also, I top stitch around the cap opening, okay, so that the two pieces will be able to join together. You can see we have the two pieces separately. So the top stitching is what will hold the two pieces together. So I top stitch from this point all around, all around, all around. So which means I top stitch on this side 
and on this side so after which i gave it a very good press then i folded it upward in order to have that shape of a dog head cap that is abitiaja cap philabitiaja so guys this is what i have after completing the cap you can see how neat and beautiful it looks so guys thank you so much for watching this video i do hope you've gotten values in the course of this tutorial go ahead and smash the subscribe button and also leave a comment in the comment area as well see you next time and always do remember there is no elevator to success you have to take the stairs. <laughs>